Where am I going? Got too high, you feel like I'm roller coasting. Hey, Corey here with the Mentored Engineer, and I'm excited about this week's video. We're going to talk about linear synchronous motors. Woo! And you're probably saying, what the heck is that? Hey, if you like what you see so far, please take a second to subscribe and click that notification bell so I can annoy you at least once a week. All right, so uh, roller coasters today, common thing that they're doing is putting LSM launches on that. And LSM means linear synchronous motor. So when you think of motor, you probably think of rotary motor, uh, some, a shaft that turns and then work is done off that shaft. Well, this is a linear motor, so what does that mean? Well, it means it works in a line, all right? And that line can be definite or somewhat indefinite, depending on how we arrange uh, our stuff. So uh, for a roller coaster, generally, you don't have LSMs the whole way. You may have 20 feet of LSM, and you can control the speed and direction of the, the cart that's moving on there. Generally, with a roller coaster, you're launching it one way, uh, cool ride like Pantheon, you're gonna go one way, then you're gonna go come back the, the same way, and then you'll come back one more time through it. Uh, so that's a triple launch, you're using the same LSMs to launch you uh, three times. Uh, so cool things can be done with LSMs. The last part is synchronous. So what exactly does that mean? Well, I'm not gonna bore you with the technical definition, but what it basically boils down to is we're gonna put out a specific sine wave pattern and we can control the exact positioning of that. We can accelerate up to a certain speed, we can hold that speed and then decelerate if we wanted to. So if we were shuttling something from over here to over here, we could accelerate quickly, hold a constant velocity and then decelerate it. And then we could go back but we can do that using this synchronous technology. So I'm kind of getting ahead of myself right now. We're gonna explain all this a lot more in detail later, but what's gonna happen is we're gonna output a sine wave and we're gonna control how far the peaks are apart. So if we want a constant speed, all the peaks will be the same distance apart. If we want to accelerate, we're gonna have peaks that are far apart and then they get closer and closer together as time goes on. And then if we decelerate, we're gonna have them close together and then they're gonna get bigger and bigger apart as we decelerate. So controlling that sine wave can control the speed of whatever we're trying to move. In this case, hopefully me. All right, so in this series, we're gonna talk about a whole bunch of things uh, related to linear synchronous motor. So there's gonna be a long series and hopefully we're gonna build a test model. And at some point, hopefully we are building an actual roller coaster with it on it and I can't wait. So a linear synchronous motor, or LSM for short, uses the principles of magnetics to make motion occur. So two components of this is, like this one, a permanent bar magnet. This magnet is magnetized through the thickness, uh, the very thin dimension here, so the largest surface on each side is either, in this case, south, and then on the opposite side, north. Uh, this is a permanent magnet, uh, will always be south and north, it can't change, the magnitude of the uh, attraction cannot change, it's permanent. Uh, on the other hand, we have uh, electromagnets. Electromagnets are cool because you can take a coil of water and put some current through it and you can get an uh, electromagnet. Now as you charge them, you're going to have a north side and a south side but you can flip the polarity and get, you know, north side over here, and south side over here. And you can keep flipping them back and forth so that your north goes from one side to the other. And, uh, I used to work in the electric utility business and uh, we'd go and observe people in the field doing their job and we'd notice that some people were grounding their trucks. And they'd have a spool of, of wire, I don't know, it's between 75 and 100 feet, you know, 50 and 100 feet or so. And any time they would take wire off that, they would unroll the whole spool. If they only needed to go 10 feet, they would unroll the whole spool. And I ended up asking them why you did that. And they said, well, if we don't, and that truck gets energized, uh, that wire reel will start spinning. And I was like, whoa, you're right. It's a metal wire wheel. 
and it will create a magnetic field with all that wire coiled on itself. So the practice is to uncoil all the wire and make sure it's not looped so that that cannot happen. Uh, if that were, thing were to spin, at the end it's gonna suddenly you know, not have any coils, which means there's no more driving force, but it could pick up you know, a couple tools in the process and fling them somewhere. So you could get hurt just by things going on or around that. So in a normal motor, like a DC rotary motor, we would have uh, permanent magnets, usually like one north side and one south side, and there'd be a stator in the middle, which would be like this. Now imagine that we drilled a hole right through the center here so that this thing could rotate this way. And that would be our output shaft as well. So we put our magnet here and we would energize the coil so that the south pole here and the south pole of the magnet would start repelling each other and it would start rotating. Now as it comes down here, we're gonna have north now and south and that's gonna attract it to itself and it's just gonna kind of stay there. But if at this point we reversed it, we could do the same thing again and again and you get the point. All right, so that's how a DC motor works. So what I've done here is I've taken a aluminum C channel and I've glued magnets all the way down. All right, I have them alternated too with the sides that are up north, south, north, south, north, south, all the way down. So now what I do is I'm going to take this car and I made it and it's got wheels that ride on the end of the uh, channel so it rides right in there legos are awesome by the way i know i've said that before on this channel but they are all right and then i've made a, a 3d printed electromagnet uh, holder and i have i think 150 coils around here of i believe 28 gauge wire so i put it there and uh, it can slide up and down and now if I go here I am over a south pole and I can magnetize my electric uh, magnet to be south as well so the south and south will repel and push it up that's stupid I'm not trying to go up I'm trying to go this way so that's problem number one think about that We're wasting energy all right however if I go halfway between the two and I go south and north on the electromagnet I'm now pushing the two souths away so south and south and then north and south Ooh, I've got a force going this way pushing the cart up and forward and the other ones pulling it down and to the and forward as well so I've got the up and down canceling Ooh, nice and uh, motion forward and that occurs all the way until I get lined up with the north one perfectly. And then I run into problem number two, which is getting stuck. All right, so problem number one, uh, wasting energy. That's a lot of energy to waste. Uh, it's not doing anything, it's just pushing it up. Uh, I don't need to use that energy. All right, that's, that's wasted energy. This is where linear synchronous motors have an advantage over their predecessor, linear induction motors. Both kind of the same principle, but linear induction motors were a lot more wasteful because of this principle. They were not being driven how we're saying to drive them now. So to solve this problem of wasted energy, we want to say that whenever the poles are lined up, either being north-north, south-south, or north and south together, uh, we want the voltage there to be zero. So whenever distance-wise those things line up, when the magnet and the electromagnet line up perfectly, we want zero volts. That's not doing anything for us. And then what we want to do is have that be maximum when we're halfway between one or the other. Well, if only there was a trigonomic function that would do that for us. <gasps> it's the sine wave. All right, so a sine wave is going to look like this. When we're lined up, it's going to be zero, and we're going to have to time that so that it's zero. And then we can be 100% uh, of that sign uh, be halfway between the magnets. So you can see that this exacerbates problem number two, which is getting stuck. If we're not powering when the, the poles are aligned, we are definitely not getting any force and we're relying on momentum to get us through to the next uh, spot where they're misaligned. Uh, well, I don't like depending on momentum all that much. I want to positively drive this thing. 
Uh, I'd liken this to your bike, all right? You've got two pedals. Uh, you get most of your power when you're, the pedals are even. That was when you're pushing with the largest moment arm. And then as you get to the top and bottom of the stroke, uh, you have no power that you can input. So you can get stuck at the top easily, but when you're riding your bike, you have enough momentum to get you over the top and you can keep going. Not a problem. It is a problem, however, when you are going up a hill. If you have to start your bike up a hill, holy cow, that's a tough uh, scenario. Uh, depending on how steep the hill is, uh, you've got to like, you know, pretty much stand on the one pedal while you can get your body weight up and on the seat and then push down with the other one uh, in time. And if you don't make it in time, you're going to stop or fall over or something like that, but that's not going to be good. Well, somebody's already made the solution to this. Uh, and it's actually been in production and use for, you know, over 200 years now. And that is... Say hello to my little friend. So this is a uh, model steam engine. Yes, I like model railroading too, don't judge. Model railroads are cool. Um, and basically up here, there's a piston and the piston can move in and out. And it will push on this draw bar here, the main big bar that goes all across and connects all three wheels. Uh, you can see here, it's fully extended. So it's at the, the the end of its stroke, it doesn't have any more uh, moment arm in between the center of the axle and the perpendicular distance to the bar. So it's not gonna provide any more power. So it's stuck, it's at the top of the uh, the bicycle right there. We're gonna push, we can push all we want. If we're sitting right there on the top, it doesn't do anything. We could push with a billion pounds and it won't do anything. Well, steam engines don't have this problem, what they do? Oh, that's, that's a good question. So on the other side, we notice that the wheels are 90 degrees difference. So that while that on the other side, it is at full stroke, this side, it's right in the sweet spot of providing power. So it can push these wheels back and the other one will start retracting and then it can start using the piston to retract on the opposite side. And soon you'll get to the full power stroke of that one. So you have even uh, an application of power now the problem with this is it's uneven power. So going back to our linear synchronous motor, how do we make this work? Well, if we have our one magnet, why don't we add a second magnet to it and about one and a half times the spacing here. So this is half of the, the magnet width so that we always have one lined up and one uh, halfway in between the other one. So while we're de-energizing this one because it's lined up, we could be energizing this one because it's not lined up and it will create the power then. And we have them kind of battling back and forth for who's giving the power. So the mathematical way to do this is to take our sine wave for the main electromagnet and then to uh, have this one be ahead of it. So it's gonna be leading us if we're moving this way it's going to be the one that gets us there first. Uh, we're going to have that be 90 degrees ahead. So what will happen is we'll end up with a cosine wave driving this one and a sine wave driving this one. Now the cosine function is just a sine wave that's leading it by 90 degrees. So uh, the cosine equals the sine of the angle plus 90 degrees. But as I mentioned, this isn't going to be smooth, even nice power we would actually want to increase this to at least three magnets. If we can do four, five, six, seven, 12, a thousand, a billion. Uh, the problem with that is it gets very expensive to drive all those. You get a lot more components, a lot more wiring, a lot more crap that can go wrong. Uh, so generally, most of them use three electric magnet drivers. So, for, so the last thing we're gonna talk about in this is we're gonna have three different output signals, each outputting a sine wave. One will be the base sine wave. The other two will be leading or lagging by uh, 120 degrees. Okay, well, this is the, just the top level overview of uh, linear synchronous motors. We got a lot to talk about. We got to talk about uh, the magnetic strength. We got to talk about driving them, PWM signals. There's just a ton of stuff to cover here. 
Uh, so please subscribe and stay tuned because these videos are going to be coming out and there's a lot to them. Thank you for watching this video.